Hello and welcome to the Cheeky Science Show, where in this video we're going to talk about CAR T-cells, a therapy that is currently being developed for cancer treatment, and how a recent study have instead used this technique to try and target senescent cells instead. So we'll begin with a discussion of what actually are CAR T-cells, and then we'll go into the paper and see some of the results they got by instead targeting senescent cells. And so obviously we'll talk about how they actually managed to use this approach to target senescent cells. So the paper I'll be focusing on is Senolytic CAR T cells refer senescence associated pathologies that came out in Nature just the, well, just the other week. And it's from Scott Lowe's lab. So we'll begin by talking about CAR T cells. So my own understanding of CAR T cells came back in 2017, which feels quite a while ago now, but still feels pretty recent to me. And I felt like I was pretty late to the table in terms of understanding this technology. And in my entertaining blog I wrote back in 2017, describes learning about CAR cells a, a, a wow moment in my life. So what actually is this technology? So this technology depends on T cells, and T cells are a key component of our immune system. This is because T cells provide cell mediated immunity against various pathogens, including viruses. And the way that they do this is by having receptors on the surface of their cells, which recognize antigens found on these different pathogens. And so, what is an antigen? Well, it's basically a fancy word for molecules that are recognized by the immune system. So in this T cell mediated immunity, the T cells recognize the antigens and cause destruction of the cell. However, a key hallmark of cancer cells is evasion of the T cell immune response. CAR T cell therapy provides a way this issue can be overcome. It involves modifying the T cells by genetically engineering them to display cell surface markers that recognize antigens on cancer cells. The cancer cells are then recognized and destroyed. And so this is where the name CAR comes from, because it stands for chimeric antigen receptor. So an important consideration for this approach is to identify antigens that are unique to the cancer cells. And so this prevents normal healthy cells from being destroyed. So does this therapy actually work? Well, I haven't entirely kept up to date with this field because it isn't really my area of expertise. But what I do know is that this CAR T cell therapy is pretty well regarded for being effective for B cell acute lymphoblastic leukemia, whereby the T cells were engineered to recognize a protein that's expressed on these cancerous B cells. As clinical trials were successful, this technique has been given FDA approval. However, some patients did develop a cytokine release syndrome, which is a severe inflammatory response that can result in high fevers, although they eventually were managed. Another concern is how pricey these treatments actually are. So to summarise CAR T cells in one sentence... Chimeric antigen receptors are synthetic reporters that redirect T cell specificity. All right, so given that you now understand what CAR T cells are and how they can be used to target cancer cells, can they now be used to target senescent cells? So, firstly, what actually are senescent cells? Well, there are some <clears throat> pretty <clears throat> good uh, videos that I could uh, redirect you to that explain senescent cells very well, but I will just give a brief overview here. So senescent cells are cells that have undergone cellular senescence that is characterised by two major hallmarks, one of which is a stable cell cycle arrest and the other is a secretory phenotype that modulates the surrounding environment of the cell. Senescent cells have been shown to have beneficial features, such as acting as a tumour suppressive mechanism to prevent tumour development of mutated and damaged cells, and also in processes such as wound healing. However, senescent cells have also been shown to accumulate with age, and due to their secretory phenotype, they can promote a pro-inflammatory phenotype that can result in chronic inflammation. Chronic inflammation is then thought to drive a variety of different age-associated diseases. This includes liver and lung fibrosis, atherosclerosis, diabetes and osteoarthritis. 
The removal of senescent cells in mouse models has been shown to improve longevity and to alleviate the symptoms of these different diseases. And so this has given rise to great interest in finding ways of removing senescent cells. And so in a pretty recent video, I talked about two different approaches, one of which uses senolytics, which are drugs that can induce a cell that is senescent to undergo cell death. And I also spoke about a genetic approach. So is there any way that CAR T cell technology can be used to remove senescent cells? Well, this recent Nature paper seems to suggest that the answer is yes. So how did they do it? Well, firstly, they needed to identify the antigen, so a, a protein target that's present on senescent cells that isn't found on normal healthy cells that they could then use to develop the chimeric antigen receptor that they have in the engineered T cells. So the way that they did this was by looking at genes expressed in senescent cells and healthy cells and seeing what genes were really high in senescent cells but really low in normal cells. And beyond this, they also wanted to look at genes that encode proteins that are receptor proteins. Therefore, they're going to be recognisable by the T cells because they're expressed on the surface of the cell. The protein target that they decided on was urokinase type plasminogen activator receptor, UPAR. And this protein is a receptor for the urokinase type plasminogen activator, which promotes the degradation of the extracellular matrix and concurrently functions as a signalling receptor that promotes motility of the cell. Interestingly, a portion of UPAR is cleaved during senescence to form soluble UPAR, or SUPAR in this case. And what is so super about SUPAR is that it is found in the plasma and so it can be used as a biomarker to assess the senolytic activity of the senolytic CAR T cells. So with their target chosen, they constructed UPAR specific CAR T cells. To test the efficacy of these cells, the team used mouse models of either lung cancer or liver fibrosis. So starting with the lung cancer mice, a potential strategy to treat the mice is to use drugs that induce senescence in the cells and to combine those drugs with senolytic agents to then remove the cells. And indeed, there has been shown previously that this improved outcome in mouse models. So what they did in this case was give the mice with the lung cancer these drugs and also the CAR T cells that are targeting UPAR expressing cells. Interestingly, they saw that treatment with the CAR T cells improved the survival without eliciting signs of toxicity, which was quite promising results. But besides cancer, senescent cells have also been shown to contribute to fibrosis. So this time they looked at the impact of using CAR T cells against senescent cells in mouse models of liver fibrosis. So if you look at the results in this figure here, we can see that the mice that were treated with the CAR T cells targeting UPAR showed a reduction in the level of fibrosis and also a reduction in the level of the senescent cells, which showed, well, it seemed to show that the use of these CAR T cells was effective at removing the senescent cells in the liver. It is interesting to point out though that they tried this with two different doses of the CAR T cells. The mice that got the lower effective dose remained highly active during the treatment phase, whether the mice that were given the higher dose, a super therapeutic dose, actually presented with hypothermia and weight loss along with an increase in cytokines such as interleukin-6 suggestive of this CAR T cell associated cytokine release syndrome. But since a lower dose was still effective, this may not be a major issue. So just to summarise, we'll consider some of the good and potential bad consequences of using CAR T cells for targeting senescent cells. So firstly, I'm just going to say also that it's a very creative idea. And if any of you watched my last video, I definitely put this as combinatorial creativity because it uses different aspects of science that we've already known about such as the CAR T cells but applied it to a new concept which is senescent cells which I think was a really cool and interesting idea. 
sometimes of the the good prospects obviously they they seem to show in the study that these car t cells are effective and also because senescent cells aren't concurrently dividing like a tumor cell it might mean that the number of times that someone would be treated with the car t cells could be very low because it's like a one-time thing so that could potentially be good also as i mentioned earlier there is the potential use of having the biomarker of the super however i think in this case there's probably other markers that should be identified that could be more effective or could show greater specificity for certain types of senescent cells minimizing the risk of any of these car t cells actually targeting healthy normal cells So definitely the safety profile and also whether or not this would ever be effective in humans definitely needs to be analysed further. But I think the other thing that should be said is that these treatments aren't particularly cheap. They're actually quite expensive due to the the nature of having to actually reprogram these T-cells. And so one could argue that if we find senolytic drugs that are more effective, this could definitely just be an easier option. But I think still this is definitely an interesting tool that they've developed and the results do seem promising so um yeah that's all I really have to say so I hope you have learned something in this video and as always thanks for listening